Bug on Wall Street. You should believe in math, not magic. You're listening to The Watchdog on Wall Street with Chris Markowski. Another eight track that was in high rotation in the uh, Markowski family truckster, Carly Simon. Anyway, welcome back, everybody. It is the Watchdog on Wall Street show. Talk about China. And I, listen, I've got enough stuff here in front of I, We could talk about it for hours. I just, I'm competitive. I, I don't want to lose. But, but I also understand, I, listen, I, I, I can get a bipolar world. I just think that we have to start competing to a greater degree. We just do. We do. Again, I don't want to command and control economy. We know. I see some of the inefficiencies that they have in China. We've seen it before. We've seen them launch yachts and have them sink, and they've got cities that they've built that are empty. I just believe that, again, we're strong because of the individual because of our freedom and we're taking it away. We're taking away. We're 20th in the world in economic freedom. Anyway, um, I got to get off the beaten track here a little bit. I saw this story. It was in the UK daily mail return of the taggers. New York is blighted with le- uh, living areas looking like war zones. Yeah. This graffiti is everywhere now. It's everywhere. It, it is. I mean, no, the subway cars don't look like they did back in the 1970s. They're on their way, but they're not there yet. But buildings everywhere. Yeah, it, it's it's an absolute mess. And it's a problem. This is New York City. New York City is a shell of its former self. It was a story I wanted to touch on. I saw this this past week about, again, it, it, I'm not kidding. Not kidding. It's garbage everywhere. There is garbage everywhere. It's piling up. Piling up. And yes, people, rats. Rats. Big ones. Big ones. Uh, and I thought about this for a second. I want to get your take on this. You know, this is could be a good opportunity, be a business opportunity here in New York since tourism is just null and void. How about this? How about we take these double decker buses? Hear me out. You know those those red double decker buses that tours around the city, and we, we basically we we turn it into a safari. We'll call it the New York Safari, where you can go around. You can put people up there, and they can go around to certain areas. There's nobody in the streets. Dead. You got big rats, and you can have people going around shooting rats be fantastic for crying out loud be a great business the new york safari where you can taking out these gigantor new york city rats that are running rampant because uh, you've got idiots in charge of the city now we're going to get into it uh, a little bit later on in the, the, the program uh you're talking about again real estate and what's happening not just in new york but all over the country as well but um I, I don't. I'm cracking jokes and I'm making fun. Um, I love New York. I love New York. Another you know, dad story. I mean, it would take us down to New York, New York City when we were kids. We'd, we'd get on the train from Albany, come down uh, for the day, and, and do the the tourist stuff. And I was always amazed um, by the place. I, I really was. And again, it, it's it's hard. To get your arm to, like so when I first moved to New York, that that energy again. Dad taking me down, moving all my stuff from college, moving into my first apartment, and that that energy that the city had, it's just it's gone, it's gone. I, I don't know how we're going to bring it back. And later on in the program, we're going to get into the the stimulus package, which is going to save us all. They passed the package. Everything is going to be okay. No, no. No, that's an absolute joke. But anyway, anyway, 
Take a quick break right here. Watchdog on WallStreet.com. Watchdog on WallStreet.com. Yeah, I'm going to stay on the oh, stay on that New York theme a little bit. We'll talk about our uh, talk about Andrew Cuomo. We'll pull in some little cancel culture and uh, some other good stuff when we get back. Watchdog on WallStreet.com. Get there. Become a part of the Watchdog on Wall Street family. Our personal CFO program. All sorts of great stuff. We also have our 24-hour day help hotline, 800 800- Four seven one fifty nine eighty four. Bringing America financial freedom one listener at a time. You're listening to the Watchdog on Wall Street with Chris Markowski. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, it's uh, it's. I, I don't know when it's going to end. When people are going to get tired of it, um, I really don't. It's just it's getting worse instead of better. We got this past week. Uh, Disney Plus has pulled what? They pulled uh, Dumbo, the Aristocrat, the Aristocats, and Peter Pan. Uh, they're no longer in the kids section because i guess they have some racist stereotypes in those films i don't know they, they're in the adult section they rated x now disney's got a, a rated x section what do they have an unfiltered uh, version of pretty woman in there too or something like that i i guess i, I know they, they pulled them from the the kids section and we all heard about uh pepe pepe le Pew. yes pepe uh pepe has been Canceled. They, they took Pepe out of the new Space Jam movie completely, and Warner Brothers said that they, they just um, erased them. Canceled them. Canceled. Pepe no longer exists. Gone. I, I thought about it this past week. I mentioned this on the podcast, too. That It's like, uh, you know, I remember in Back to the Future when uh, Marty McFly is looking at the Polaroid picture of his family, his brothers and his sisters, and they're just disappearing. Erased from history. Yeah. Well, guess what? You know who else did that? Who erased from history? The Soviets did that. Yeah. Stalin, uh, Stalin, somebody ticked Stalin off and he decided to get rid of that person. Could have been Stalin's best buddy, relative, didn't make any difference. They would go through, they'd go back, and they would erase them from history. Like, get rid of pictures of that individual. They never existed. That's that's what we have today. Um, Pepe Le Pew, I guess he, uh, according to Charles Blow, here we get right read this guy's columns in the New York Times. Again, uh, I'm like I said at the beginning of the program, I am doing my best, my darndest to be more dad like, more Roy like, my father. Um, I feel bad for people like this that just have so little going on that are just so. Angry people that have to see, I don't know, take issue with everything. People that have no sense of humor at all. Well, Charles Blower, peace and canceled Pepe Le Pew. Um, yeah, it was interesting. There was a meme going on around there. Somebody sent out, I said, Ah, oh, thank God Warner Brothers uh, canceled, uh, canceled uh, Pepe Le Pew so my kid can go play, uh, uh, what's that? That uh, gangster video game out there, and uh, well, look, he could—he just burned a hooker to the ground because uh, he didn't pay. I mean, just, are you kidding me, Pepe Le Pew? And I, I thought about it a little bit, and um, I said, you know, uh, because Charles Blown said, he said, how many, how many boys out there have been influenced? And in essence, become rapist, been influenced by Pepe Le Pew. See, I watched Pepe, and I never acted like Pepe in my entire life. But we all know somebody who did. Yes, I give you Andrew Cuomo. So I was thinking about it this past week, and you know, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just playing one on the radio right now. Um, I, I, I got to do the Pepe Le Pew defense. If I was Andrew Cuomo's lawyer, you could you could pull this out. Oh, sure. It's not Andrew Cuomo's fault for, what is he, up to six women now for groping and doing all sorts of Pepe Le Pew-like things to these women. It's not Andrew's fault. Andrew has child 
uh, his dad, Mario. Yes, Mario. He was governor of New York, too, and he was busy. Didn't get to spend enough time with little Andrew. And Andrew was sitting in front of the TV for just way too long, watching too many uh, Looney Tunes cartoons. And Andrew was influenced in the wrong way by Pepe Le Pew. So it's not Andrew Cuomo's fault for being a groper. It's Pepe's fault. What do you think? I, honestly, I, I didn't no law degree or anything like that. And look what I look what I pulled out of my hat. Amazing, huh? Anyway, gonna take another quick break. Everybody, you're listening to the Watchdog on Wall Street Show. Watchdog on Wall I got to get into that fired journalist story when we. Uh, return and also the carbon racket when we come back watchdog on wall street.com you're listening to the watchdog on wall street taking wall street's liars crooks and cheats out behind the woodshed you're listening to the Watchdog on Wall Street. That other one. Again, it hurts so good. Uh, I, I, it's, just tune in. It's the, the show today, I, I guess I could say it's in honor of uh, my dad. But again, I, there's nothing I could do that, that would, there can say. That would just do the man justice. Just what a wonderful, wonderful guy he was. And I'm listening to this song, okay? You got Daryl Hall and John Oates. Uh, Kiss is on my list. And uh, he would tease us. I mean, all, I was, now it's again, I've, I've got the same thing. I'm constantly you know, teasing my kids, my wife, my mother, you name it. But uh, he would start singing that song to us. You know, we started getting girlfriends and things like that. And. Uh, Hey, Chris, is so-and-so's kiss on your list? He's just to tease us. I am. Let me tweet another great, great. I don't care. I'm sharing them. Dad's story today. Um, we would, would, mom would send us from time to time, you know, to the grocery store, the Price Chopper. Price Chopper in upstate New York. And we would be with my dad. And my dad would go out of his way to make us feel uncomfortable or embarrass us in any way, shape, matter, or form. He would actually sing the jingles loud, like songs to the commercials of the food items when we were walking down the aisles. I remember walking by the pet food. I don't know why this one is sticking in my head. There was some pet food back in the day. Chef Splend has more flavor in one bag. He would be singing it loud like that in the grocery store. And, you know, again, young, embarrassed, but, uh, man, it was all, all good. Anyway, anyway, I mentioned this story this past week. Um, a bunch of, and again, this is part of the problem, liberal journalists. Let me just make this perfectly clear. Um, th- those two words are not supposed to go together because they can't. It's like oil and water. If you're going to be a journalist, you have to call it straight. You can't be a liberal journalist. You have to be a journalist. You can't be a conservative journalist. You have to be a journalist. Now, I am a, without a doubt, I am a right of center, a conservative pundit. We all know I'm an equal opportunity basher. I go after Republicans actually more than I go after Democrats because Republicans are full of crap. They never do what they say that they're going to do. But anyway, anyway, we call it like we see it here on the program better than most journalists do again it's it's helpful if you're honest okay i I can't lie to myself i can't lie to you i can't follow a lie because guess what i wouldn't be a very good money manager if i did so anyway i get off a beaten track here liberal journalists fired from the huffington post i guess they they fired uh one-third of their staff. And I was taking a a look at this, and the people that were fired, various different reporters, and and looked at some of their columns. And and these are the the people out there that were jumping up and down and yelling, screaming about Joe Biden and shutting down the Keystone Pipeline and how great this is. Oh, yeah, not a care about any of the workers that lost their jobs, but they lose theirs, and oh, my Lord, it's, it's just terrible. This is awful. So I, I don't 
I, I'm not a callous person, but why don't you flip all of the 